Let's welcome a new sponsor to the program and to ORM. It's Gooder. Gooder Shades, if you've been paying attention, you'll see that Amelia Boone has her very own pair. The Queen of Pain Esquire is the model that they're called. You've also probably seen good old Woodsy is rocking a pair, because who's more fun than Ryan Woodsy? Their mission statement is, we're recklessly committed to fun, blah, 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 sunglasses. They've got six OG Beasts, which are the normal size sunglasses, and six Beast effing gooders, BFG for larger noggins. I think I kind of have one of those. No slip, no bounce, all polarized, all beast. Gooder loves a world where jerks are a positive thing. A snatch is not just a movie in which you can't understand what the fuck anyone is saying. And a fire breather is not a carnival freak. In this world, a six pack means abs. And in the unlikely situation that it's about beer, it's only light or gluten free. Obvi. Even if your goal was camaraderie and building strength to start, the side effect of that is a great looking body. Don't insult your muscles by rocking ugly shades. Look gooder, beast gooder. I've worn these. River has worn these. They've got a bunch of fun names. Check them out at gooder.com. That's gooder.com. Yeah. Get up. Welcome to the Obstacle Racing Media Podcast with Matt B. Davis. With over 300 episodes since 2012, Matt has produced the most consistent podcast in OCR. Each episode, Matt speaks with race directors, athletes, and industry insiders to bring you the most in-depth interviews and conversations in the world of obstacle racing, adventure runs, and ultra marathons. If you have small children nearby, now is the time to put on some headphones or send them off to watch Phineas and Ferb, as there are occasionally four-letter words, which are not bleeps. Now, here is your host. Now here is your goddamn host. Now here's your host, fucking Matt B. Davis. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Obstacle Racing Media Program podcast. I don't know. What's the name of the show? Hey, it's me. It's Matt B. Davis in your ears. We have such a good relationship, I feel like, you and I, the listener, you, that's you I'm talking to right now. Thanks for allowing me in your headphones. There are so many fucking podcasts. There is so much content out there. You could be listening to anything in the world, and you've taken the time to listen to my show, and you've been doing it for a long time, and I appreciate you, and I mean that. Let's check in with Patreon. We got some new members recently. Very excited. We've got our drawing. I'll do it next week. For those of you that want to get in, it's not too late. Uh, you get one drawing in the hat or two drawings in the hat for a prize pack. I'm looking at, I got a box of stuff over there. I don't even know everything I'm going to throw in it, but it's going to be pretty awesome for the Patreon members. But let's welcome them. We've got Will. I don't know which Will that is. I don't think that's Will Hicks. I think it's somebody else. I'll go back and look. Will, Tony Marr, Sophia Harnady, Sean Rumba, Scott Forrester, Scott Carter, Samantha Thompson, Ryan Maisano, Randy Seeley, Patrick Hermiller, OCR Talk, Nate Ort, M. Stefano Running, Mike O'Farrell, Matthew Puntin, Mark Heyman, Kim DeVos, Joseph Carollo, Carollo? Carollo, Jeff Schof, Eric Wilkin, Dan the Man, Christopher Stevens, Christopher McLeod, Brian Reynolds, and Brad Heilwagen. That's 25 active patrons we've got. So awesome. So glad you're with us. We're making dreams come true. If you didn't see before, I got an Osmo to provide some super cool content. I used that Osmo for the first time at Mutter Obstacle Beta Testing. I can show you everything from that weekend after, I think it's the 8th, which is the weekend of World's Toughest. So probably after World's Toughest because we'll be so crazy with World's Toughest. Uh, but when you donate to Patreon, for those of you that are new and don't know what Patreon is, it allows content creators to do more of what they do, and you can participate by donating as little as $1 a month. Go to patreon.com slash obstacle racing media. There'll be a link in the show description uh, about how you can do that. I value my Patreon members. Thank you so much. Early Patreon members have already gotten, what, shirts mailed to them, shoes mailed to them? Plus these cool monthly drawings where I want to give away races and cool prizes, shit from sponsors, etc., etc. There is one review to read that I don't think I've read from Dr. Kristen O.T., October 5th, 2018. Awesome podcast, funny and informative. That's all she wrote, or he literally wrote, and that's fine. 
You can leave a review on iTunes and do a lot or a little. On today's program, Charlie Brenneman, the Spaniard. Can't remember if we went over this on the call, sorry, on the chat, but he and I met at the Agogi 2016. That's the last Agogi I was at, I believe. He was up there to meet with Joe and his team, and I think they did a Spartan episode, a Spartan Up episode. We said we'd stay in touch. We kind of did for a little bit, but then we met. We had coffee the morning of one of those great 6 a.m. Maybe it was 5 a.m. Maybe it was 4 a.m. We were both up early. We were both on East Coast time, and the place wasn't even open yet, so we had to get coffee from the lobby. I think he had tea maybe, but we've got similar passions, and I think that shines through. Similar passions, we've got kids, we're trying to do our own thing, and sometimes a a bond just happens, and you can't force it, man, Uh, just like any relationship. Uh, But he and I, he and I made a true bond, I think it shows through, I believe I made a friend that weekend. Let's not dilly-dally, let's get right into it. Charlie the Spaniard Brenneman, away we go. This is the HN4. H4, and I like to call it podcaster's best friend. I have the H... No, wait. Uh, what is it? Not H1N1. That's, I think, the I don't virus. Fucking, I don't fucking know. H1N. That's what I have, H1N. You have H4N, so you're that much cooler than I am. Yep. So can we go straight to the, your 60K payday? Because that's exciting. <laughs> Who did you beat? Okay, so that... W- <laughs> so they won't have any contacts. Who cares? Okay, so... I when I start this interview, I'll say it's Charlie. Okay. He's a UFC guy. And we had a conversation. We had a whole conversation. Okay. So that was when I beat Rick Story. So at the time, Rick Story was number six in the world. And you were... Not even a thought on their radar. Okay. And Rick Story's opponent. So if Rick Story would... Which... What fight was this? Okay, so this was in Pittsburgh. UFC... I think it was on, uh, versus UFC on versus. Versus TV. Okay, so let's back up. Let's let's okay. Let's back up a little bit. <laughs> Are you gonna what, edit this on or no? <laughs> no? Have you never listened to my show? <laughs> I haven't, but I could tell. This that is exactly I how I roll. Stupid this question, this yes. is exactly how I roll. <laughs> so my understanding is the fights are numbered. Yeah. So there's there's pay per views which are numbered. UFC whatever two. Which every time Dario, who I know is listening, messages me and goes, "You gotta pay for this one," and I'm like. Who's, and I don't know any of the people. He's like, I'm telling you. And he tells me why. He breaks down the main card and who I should watch it. And then I don't pay for it. And then it's over. And then I don't care. And then like a month goes by and he's like, no, this one. Okay. 201. You got to watch this one. I'm going to tell you this. You got to buy the one next week. See? <laughs> you guys are the same. Okay. <laughs> no, but this is a real one. This, it's always a real one. Even Conor McGregor. You know Conor McGregor, right? Of course I do. Of course you do. Well, he's fighting the baddest, baddest, can I say the word ass? The baddest ass guy there is. Is it the guy he was supposed to fight a month ago that got canceled? This is Khabib. Khabib Nurmagomedov. And it's a big time fight. Khabib's undefeated from Dagestan, Russia. How much do you still pay attention to the game? A fair amount. I check, you know, the sites every day, so decently. Have you ever been interviewed by Ariel Hawani? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Can you get me an Quite introduction? Often. I probably could do that. Ariel is a friend of mine. So I became aware of him. Hold on. Let me tell you about Ariel before you tell me about okay. Ariel. So back in the day when I, I think I was in the UFC at that time, but he was coming up. What year? What year? So this is 2010, 2010, right? And he was coming up. Is Ariel Hawani, who is now on ESPN. I mean, he's big, the, the probably the most prominent MMA journalist there is. And he was, uh, was it, uh, what do they say, uh, gr- whatever his teeth, car- carving his teeth or gr- whatever. Cutting his teeth. Cutting his teeth, yeah. He had a show online and then he had a website. And at that time he had a show on, uh, I don't know if it was Versus, it was a smaller network. And he, he, he was coming up. He, he was not accepted as Ariel everywhere. So he was like cutting his teeth, doing what he could do. And I lived in North Jersey. Do you know this guy? I don't. I see him all the time. Introduce yourself. Come on. Michael? The famous Michael Isabel. Charlie. Who shoots more Spartan shit than anybody for the last 12 years for Buffalo whatever. Good guy. Good to see you, man. Good to meet you. He's a good dude. 
So you ever see really cool videos like of a gogi and blah, blah? That's him. Yeah, well, I like it. Okay. Uh, so anyway, Ariel was coming up, and I was in North Jersey. And so I locked, basically locked into it. I met him. We, we hit it off. And then he would have these live television shows on a live network. I would drive in from North Jersey. He needed people who could talk about fighting. So I locked into being on all these live shows, and we struck a bond. He's a good guy. So I became aware of him. My friend Dario, who's been a UFC guy for a while, uh, said, you should listen. It was when the whole thing where he cried and all that. So I listened to that. And then I started following him. And I was like, oh, like, well, he's clearly like, I want to be him, right? Like, I want to be the Ariel Hawani of OCR, right? Absolutely. So uh, I'm super impressed with anybody that does that, right? Because I know what a freaking... yeah grind is and i feel his pain because like i'm in similar situations right because this industry this industry is so small you think Mm -hmm. ufc is small so small that like you know i i used to get accused of being like spartan fanboy all the time because the most news was about spartan race there wasn't tough mutter news every week because they didn't even have a competitive race but basically anytime i'm with any of these guys it's like oh well you're clearly biased towards those guys anyhow so so Where the I hell had, were we? I had Ariel on my I had Ariel on my show, on show, and you should listen to it because he tells like how he when he was a boy he had visions of this. That's great. And, and now he's there. And it's, I will listen to it. What episode number is it? I have so many I can't tell you. You but. started doing some episodes where like you would just talk for like five minutes, right? I do every day, Monday through Friday, eight minutes. Okay. I read a book. I talk about what I read. And then what do you? And then is that a separate show from your interviews? No. So I, I basically the Spaniard show is basically like a network. And I have a bunch of different formats okay. of episodes. I have eight-minute daily episodes. I do hour-long interviews. I have a 20-minute called What I Learned This Week, where I literally talk about what I learned that week from books and interviews. And then I have a kids series where I read kids' books, reading The Outsiders right now. What is the most uh, downloaded or the most engaged? What do people like the most? I, I feel like, so AMX is my daily series. And that's on the AM Excellence to start your day off with excellence with the right mindset, et cetera. And that's kind of, I feel like the most, it doesn't have the most downloads because you don't have a famous guest, you know, it's just me talking about books. But that's the thing that I think hits people the most. In terms of most downloads, man, it, it's so subjective. And I'm relatively early in, in podcasting, but it depends who the guest is, if they share it, et cetera, et cetera. Military is always high. Military, th- because they share it. And they're fascinating stories. So military... You're giving me a secret now. I did not know this. Military guests for me are super... And well, I have some introductions that I can give you because well, they're Well, here's what's interesting. This is what I tell people. Like, when you start podcasting, you think, oh, the so-and-so is going to share it. It's going to be huge. And then they don't, they right? Don't. But you know who moved the needle? Very few people move the needle. But Amelia always moves the needle. Yep. Noah Galloway, who's military, but it's because... These fucking moms love him from Dancing in the Stars. Yeah. I've had him on a couple times. It always moves the needle when he yeah. retweets. It's like amazing. It, and it's really neat when you see that because it's it feels good to put a good thing out there and then have them at least value it enough because it's hard, it's not everyone will share because they have their own thing they're doing and sharing. Of course, it's so. like it's like it happens to me. Like I, I get put on a show and then they want me to reshare it. And sometimes if it's not, they don't think very good. I happen to think I do a very good job. Obviously, right? So. Where the heck were we? So it wasn't a number. It was a... It oh, yeah. It's a really good memory because I had no idea where we were. But so the pay-per-view, the biggest cards are numbers. UFC, whatever. Two, whatever, whatever. Below that, and it's, it's evolved and evolving as the sport evolves. They used to have fight nights. They called it UFC Fight Night. Okay? And I fought on a couple of those cards. I've been on paper... I've never been on the pay-per-view card, but I've been on pay-per-view events whenever Anderson Silva lost to... Whenever Anderson Silva beat Chael Sonnen in Oakland, California, it was a giant, it's a super famous fight. Right. But anyway, I was on that undercard. I fought Johnny Hendricks, who was a future world champion. But And then there's fight nights. There's on versus. So I was normally on the TV cards. And I think I co-main evented three or four of the TV cards. And why was that payday so big? Because so I got thrown into Rick Store was number six in the world. He had an opponent. The opponent got yanked because of some shenanigans. They needed basically a sacrificial lamb. My opponent from Canada, I feel like there's so many Canadians here. There is. Yeah. But anyway, he's from Canada. Uh, TJ Grant, with whom i become good friends. He was sick. I didn't have a fight. Rick Story needed a fight. They said, can that guy fight him? Fully expected me to get my butt kicked. And I just knew I was going to win. And it was in Pittsburgh. And I'm 
from near Pittsburgh, and it was awesome. So I won. I had nice sponsors, and then I got a nice bonus. Because the sponsors... The sponsors paid a little bit more because I was the co-main co-main event but doesn't like also doesn't like dana white pay you more if you knock somebody out correct and i got a well this is, yeah but I, and i got a bigger bonus like that because of that however there there have been fights i fought anthony johnson who's super big one of the toughest dudes ever i got more money for getting kicked in the face and tko'd by him than for beating other people <laughs> because i guess i don't know maybe i had a ba- like a boring win versus that was exciting so i got paid more to Get kicked in the face and lose, then. But they don't know it's going to be more exciting. Isn't the payday based no, no, on no, him? No. I'm talking the bonus. Okay. The locker room bonus is what it's referred to. So he would come in and give you more money because you got your teeth kicked in. Correct. You get it in the mail. I think. I think at first it was actually cash, but as it evolved, you'd get a. Okay, so that's called a, a what's an uh, ancillary bonus? They call it a locker room bonus. Right. So it was not in. Because in the old days, it was like, Probably. have you heard that amazing story of like the very first one? No, but I can tell some pretty fun stories after you tell me that one. Well, no, there's like it's like a famous. I think you can watch it on YouTube now because I heard there's a there's a podcast about it, like a thirty for thirty podcast about this first fight where like. What happens if we take this tiny oh, Asian no. guy? Oh, yeah, the history of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you meant like a, a wad of cash or something. No, no, no. Oh, what, yeah. What's it called? What was it called or whatever? And yeah, like the, the one guy trained everybody to beat, and like he beat everybody just because they knew how to. Grace Gracie beat everybody because he could. He knew jujitsu and nobody else knew jujitsu. Yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, if you, if, I don't know if your listeners watching or not, but if you, I mean, I'll say tapes. I'm sure their DVDs are streaming now, the right. early UFCs. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, there, there's, there's, there's sumo wrestlers fighting. So, Little guys. So the first thing I can remember is a New Year's Eve, and I, it must be early 90s, right? Because I must be out of high school and because we're at a party. I must be out of high school. And it was a New Year's Eve, and it was a pay-per-view that somebody paid for, and there was a literal cage, and there was big – it was let's see what happens if we put this That's giant – That's what it started as. So when did you start? I start so that's 1993 when that happened. Okay. And then I graduated from college. I was a wrestler in 2004. A collegiate wrestler. Yeah, Division One. And from yeah. what school? Division One, Lock Haven University. It's a small D1 school. Okay. I finished in the round of 12, so I was decently successful. But then went what, home. What weight? 157. Okay. Uh, went home and I was a Spanish teacher for three years. That's total. where the Spaniard comes yeah. from. <laughs> Actually, it's previous to that, but yeah. <laughs> so I had really long curly hair, so my, my wrestling coach would call me Antonio Banderas. And then we started doing wrestling camps, and that transitioned into Spaniard. But uh, I just got really bored, and, and then I just pretty much on a whim said, uh, I'll try fighting. And then I fought. And that was, uh, I, I, t- I retired from teaching after three years, and that was 2004 to seven. And then I started fighting in seven, and my last fight was in 14. So, but how quickly do you get good enough that you're in like these real cards because i gotta assume for every guy like you there's a hundred scrapping away i mean so i watched that well just go ahead so it it is getting more and more like that disgusting fit aid by the way (laughs) i'm good listen people like my show because i'm not afraid to call out i know i that's why i like you as just i like you for that reason this is cold brew coffee let's try this I uh, I don't even remember what you asked. Oh, I, I'm a I was a wrestler, so that put me starting on the 50 yard line. But why more than say why say more than a boxer? Because, and this is not bias; it's fact. Wrestling is a very do- the most dominant. I'll say martial art because it is nowadays considered martial art. But it's to have the ability to to physically control someone, whether I want it to be on the ground or or on our feet is more important if, if I would fight a boxer any day because I would take him down in a second because he can't go in on you he doesn't under and he can't stop me from going in on him you know it's amazing I being a wrestler and a fighter feel like body awareness body control throwing a punch is intuitive you're born with that but it's really not so I had learned all the like a boxer doesn't know how to defend a takedown because they have not been doing it since they were a baby so it's very easy to take a stand-up fighter down. Okay. But stand-up fighters who learn to get good at defending takedowns are obviously harder to fight. Okay, so you were a wrestler. Yeah. What did you need to improve on? In fighting or wrestling? In, in, no, in, in UFC. 
For me, the stand-up game never, never flowed naturally. There's some fight. Some you have, Frank Yeager is a perfect example. There's some wrestlers turned fighters who really take to the stand-up game. For me, my intuition, my instinct, is to take you to the ground. Always, always. But when you always. take him to the ground, is it to submit or to punch in the face? All of the above. Whatever. I was very, very position oriented, so I'm really heavy on top. So work kind of like. Uh, but if you're not a strong guy, then I can. No, and get you out. can't. You can't. Can we, we, we go? Can actually do it right now. Can we now. go? I don't want to, but if there were cameras, we would. It's so hard, dude. First of all, two things are very hard. I, th- I want to get educated. If someone is, if someone has heavy top pressure, that just means that if I'm on top of you, I'm going to feel like I weigh more than 170 pounds. I'm going to put my shoulders in the right place. I'm going to put my chest in the right place. You're going to not be able to move. So your wins came from either dominating position or by submissions and a couple of TKOs so, from So TKO cuts. is just when when they go to the fucking pounce and the guy j- jumps in and stops it. That's fried up TKO. Or if I cut you and the ref says the fight is over. Okay. Submission are you going for an arm a leg? What's your move? What are you what are you going to uh, go I, for? I, I really like the neck choking. The neck? Yeah, choking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I got to tap out or because you just like see me go unconscious? I don't think I've ever made anyone unconscious from a choke. But I just love the neck because in wrestling, I just love grabbing your neck and it's really. So I think I looked up your record. What are you like? Twelve and six? What were you? Nineteen and eight. Nineteen and eight? Yeah. All right. So not horrible. What is that? Six fifty? Seven fifty? What is that? <laughs> um, I will say that seven of the eight losses were to UFC fighters, as opposed to the average Joe. And what, what, what? many of them were like number one and two in the world. So it's, you know. So then when did you know, like, mm, you know what? I'm not going to be Conor McGregor or whoever you wanted to be at the time. Well, I, I've never said I wouldn't be Conor McGregor. But I'm not fighting anymore. But I'm saying you clearly stopped fighting professionally. I did stop, but it wasn't because I thought I can't be the best in the world. It was because I had gotten released from the UFC. Okay. And I, I had a daughter and I had a wife and my priorities in life were changing. And I realized to get back there again, because I had been there twice, UFC, won some big fights, lost a couple fights, fired. Won four fights, got back to the UFC, lost three fights. How does that happen, fired. by the way? Do you get an email? What happens? It's a good question. It happens to many, but a lot of people find out online. I, th- I think I, I would get a call from my manager. But you know, you know, you know, you know before it happens. Uh, but when I got cut from the UFC the second time, I just looked at my life and thought, what do, what, what do I want to do? And to get back to the UFC a third time was highly unlikely anyway, because almost no one does. But also, I, wa- I didn't want to sacrifice the same things anymore. And I knew that to get back to world, world-class level, I would have to sacrifice a lot of things, and I just didn't want to anymore. Because the amount of training is just... Oh, training, being away, the, the non-stable finances, the risk to my brain... You know, start yeah, to but kids. podcaster doesn't seem to be a super like lucrative. Not not necessarily lucrative, but the ups and downs. Mm, these ups and downs are nothing compared to fighting ups and downs, dude. <laughs> we're sitting here talking, not fist fighting. Right. So it's pretty, yeah. There's no. We're we're How drinking I, soda in, or not soda. I'm, well, I'm drinking a cold brew, which is not bad, by the way. I'm drinking the cold brew, which is decent. It's weird though. The first thing on the bottom it says Spartan Kids Foundation, which is a little weird. Yeah, we're not a, a coffee little, sponsor. Right, yeah. How much, how much when the fight starts or right before it starts, whenever they do the touch gloves things, is the look in the eye of, I'm going like, to take your will now. Like, how much of that is into that it? That happens at weigh-ins. More at weigh-ins. Than, more, than the fu- more than the beginning of the fight. So when you go to a weigh-in, you're like, I, Dude, I, I got this. Dude, it feels all over my body. This, this it's guy, the coolest thing. It's to be like, I got this fucking guy. The co- I seriously have chills all over my body. It's, the, it's I must be a phenomenal interviewer. It's, you are a phenomenal interviewer. <laughs> it's very fighting is very primal, right? Very primal, right? It's why and we love to watch it. Nothing cooler than getting on a stage after weighing in in front of a crowd, nose to nose, and and it's not. I would probably some people fake it, but. If you, you to, to really get to that level, you got to train. And when you train, you believe in yourself. So I fully believe that I'm going to kick your butt. You fully believe you're going to kick my butt. Right. And then we're going to stand nose to nose. Right. And we're just going to feel everything about each other. And then I, every single fight, was fully convinced I was going to win. And I was fully convinced that I won that. That, that fight, that battle yeah. we just had. 
Right. And it is so freaking cool, man. It's it's the one of the neatest. It's probably actually now that we're talking about it, it's probably my favorite thing about fighting. But so then the that. times you lost, how does that then weigh in? Because someone has to lose. It's just two dogs in a fight. One of them's going to lose. That's just it. You, 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 it. It doesn't matter. How quickly after a loss is it? Oh man, I know exactly what went wrong there. Uh, pretty quick. You, and what is and what for you? What was that? And for you, what was for that? me? Like I said, with stand up, I never got I never got really comfortable with stand up. And then when I would fight, I would just go right, just go. And when I would go, I wasn't always looking in the right places, so I would. I never I would get hit and and it would not end well when I lost. So, but but doesn't your coach or whatever say like, all right, buddy, like it's yeah, you gotta, you know what I mean? Like yeah. out here, right? You can't win the race in the first mile, but fights pretty quick, right? Yeah. What are they? Three five minute rounds. Three five minute rounds, right? So, yeah, obviously I didn't go in with the intention of I'm gonna go balls to the wall and get punched in the chin, but. It just happens. But when you say I didn't play the stand-up game well, so when you if you're trying to get them and they you, that means they were just too quick for you. Yeah, or they knee, or they punch you, or or. Ow, what's a knee to the chin feel like? Pretty tough. Pretty rough. <laughs> I'll tell you what's what hurts. Actually, what hurts the most is getting leg kicked. Hey, buddy, I got some good pictures. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I. This is actually a beer. Doesn't look like one. You wanna know how many beers I've had in the last I don't know, three years, probably five. Right. And two of them, one was last year here. Right. So anyway, so you go in too hard, too fast, you, you get your jaw yeah. knocked in, oh, and then was, you learn nothing and do it again next time? I mean, it's just they're trying to do that. It's it's not like a one way street, you know. As much as I'm learning, they're learning. As much as I'm trying, they're trying. So it just comes down to circumstance, technique, etc. But what really hurts are leg kicks. Worse than the the, the jaw? Yeah, honestly, you don't feel it on your jaw. You just because the adrenaline's going. Yeah, but leg kicks really hurt so much so that it would be neat, Matt, <laughs> for me to kick. <laughs> the 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 grin he has right now. <laughs> it sucks so bad. Please don't. I won't. Please don't do it. It seriously hurts, dude. Me. I had that friend in high school that that like learned shit and would show you yeah. and would take your finger and bend it to like over there. Like what a dick, dude. Yeah. Like yeah. we don't we don't we have no defense against that. Yeah. What a dick that guy is. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So that that's what hurts the worst. So you said you do sort of keep up with the fight game. I should watch. I should watch Connor. You really should watch that fight. That's a very big fight. Do you think? Did you think Connor had a chance against Floyd Mayweather? No, not at all. Do you think he knows that and doesn't care because it's a ten million dollar payday? To be honest with that, I don't know because that I people ask a lot. Do, do you like him? I do like Connor. I like Connor McGregor. You know, I don't know him, but I like him. Right. Why do I like him? Because he's in actually we're, we're at the Smart World Championships in Joe's book. He talks about in, integrity and, and wholeness. That is Conor McGregor. He is integritous. He how he acts is how he thinks and how he feels. It's not fake. You see a lot of Conor McGregor copycats now that just aren't them and they look like D bags. And it's, it's like, but isn't it kind of a D bag move to fly over here with some of your homies just to fucking throw some shit at a bus? Yes. So I'm not defending that. <laughs> I'm not defending that. But anyhow, so I might actually think that Connor thought he would be. Yeah, of course he did. Look, if you're going to fight, you think you're going to win. I suppose there are some people who take fights that they don't think they're going to win. But you do. It's just you do or you wouldn't do it. Or you do it for the wrong reasons, I suppose. Maybe. Might. So what did you think about the big sale? Of the fight? No, of UFC. Oh, um, on, see that stuff. I don't. I don't want to say I don't care about, but I don't. I don't really. I don't. It, I didn't really think anything about it. it. Made sense. I mean, to them, the four billion dollars is a lot of money. It has really changed since then, and it's making me more content with not fighting, watching what it has become. Just a bunch of loudmouths who say non. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not a perfect person, but it's just I don't want to. I almost don't want to be associated with that just because it's really, eh, sometimes. Well, Dario, again, who I know is listening, said that he, he doesn't go to a lot of fights. He gets all the pay-per-views, but he went, and he said he was so disappointed because it was like these people were just kind of like bloodthirsty, 
and like don't appreciate the sort of the sweet science that we call it in boxing it, because it, not everything is it's not Rocky Four. And he said the audience he felt like I'm with a bunch of idiots. And as a fighter, <clears throat> when you're fighting and getting booed by an arena, it's like come on, people like these people. Me, I'm I I, I pretty sure it happened to me. It's like. Come on. Right. But it, but it is that, the bloodthirst. But then it also reminds me, hey, I'm the one that signed up to fight in a cage. <laughs> so, I, I kind of. So they're okay. So it's okay for them to treat me like a zoo animal because I'm in a fucking cage? because I just signed the paper to be a zoo animal. Well, dude, that's some deep shit, bro. Yeah. That just made the, if I did that thing where you play a quote before the podcast and then you go into the podcast, that would be the quote. But I don't do that. <laughs> It's too much work. It's not that it's too much work. It's just I try not to do anything that's always done. Yeah. I so if you do that, I don't hold it against I you. I don't. I'm very, very similar. Very similar. I just like that's everybody's move, and I don't want to do that move. Very similar to you, my friend. Right. Um, yeah, dude. I'm just – I'm always super curious, which is why I do this, right? Like I said, we, so you and I were getting coffee this morning, and I started asking you questions, and it's like that. there's no difference. Yeah. Right? And that's what uh, su- surprisingly is lacking – in like everybody starts a podcast or a video show or whatever and like it's like they're garbage yeah right they're very scripted and they're whatever and it's like they people think well it's just asking questions and i must be able to do that like everybody thinks they have a good sense of humor or everybody thinks they're good and bad it's I easy guess. to tell if the, 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 it's not a pure approach to it right so i just watched this morning running this race for me is not easy to do oh i didn't even ask you about your race how'd it go yeah it went pretty well <laughs> but I, I i was nervous for it i'm here alone Last year, I ran with a buddy, and I thought, this is going to be really hard. And, and the last <laughs> – I ran a marathon. I did this last year. I've run, you know, 13, 15, whatever miles. But I ran a, uh, a 15K on July 4th, and my brother and I rotated. We had a double bob, a baby stroller. Oh, okay. And we rotated every other mile, pushing my son and his daughter. And on mile three, I was dying. It was very hot. The, you know, like weight of the babies, and so since this then, is in Pittsburgh, Altoona. Okay, and since then I, I've been running, trying to run long, more long distance, but hurting very bad. You do not. This woman does not stop working. I've not seen you stop moving. This VIP. This VIP is. What is your What is your regular role by? She just said. Organizational development practitioner. If your job has more than four syllables, I can't hang. So I basically um, train people to be better. Good job. And that's why you hang out with Spartan. That's, that is why I started Spartan. So actually, um, Joe, Joe and Colleen saw me um, t- training at Facebook, at the Facebook campus in Menlo Park, California. And um, it was just really, they said, what, what's your story? What's your background? Because I really was able to get a good group of people up and moving, doing Joe's 100 of everything, 100 leg lifts, 100 sit-ups, 100 burpees. And I said, you know, I've, organizational development is my role. For 25 years in Silicon Valley, I really do help teams optimize performance based on their demographics and workflow, whatnot. And, um, and I'm a personal trainer and I'm a coach. And he said, I want you in Spartan. I don't care what you do, but come to Spartan. Can I, can I interview you later? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, my pleasure, Matt. <laughs> there you go. I need a lot of organizational help. Yeah. What if I told you? What if I told you that I've been making it up as I go since day one with zero plan, and that's gotten me so far? But I feel like I could use a really whole bunch of organization development. We'll optimize your performance. Can you please help me optimize my performance? I have a lot of kids, and they cost a lot, and they never stop eating. We'll take care of you. Okay. Hey, speak of optimization. I mean, I'm being interviewed, and then uh, you were just interviewing someone else when I was being. Interviewed. Did you? Do you, you consider that rude? No. This I is what care. happens. This is my favorite. This, Matt, I've done a lot of interviews. This is one, I'm going to say one of, without a doubt. I might even say top. Really? And we haven't even gotten started. We're 29 minutes in. It's just very, it's fun. It's fun me. It's funny. It's fun and funny because. But this is the kind of stuff that I would love to talk to you about oh, on and offline. Hold on. Sorry to cut you off. Let me cut you off before I forget. You were talking about real, you know, not doing what everyone else is doing. This morning, so I was nervous about this, right, 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 et cetera. Right. So I thought I need to watch something to, to lift me up. I need something. I love consuming good content. And I found a documentary on Netflix about Foo Fighters. Relatively new. You know the band Foo Fighters? I've seen that documentary. Back and forth? Tremendous. Amazing. And they talked about recording, I think, their newest album, if not with, well, on tape. 
And then there was a segment where one of the band members, I forget which one it was, said, it's not perfect, but it's not supposed to be perfect because we're human beings and human beings aren't perfect. So it's what rock and roll should be. And I feel like that is well said. And I carry that into my show as well. And obviously you carry it into your show as well. So I watched that documentary and like because, I mean, how old are you? 37. Okay. So Dave Grohl has probably been a bigger part of your life than even mine because I'm 46. So I, when I first heard, I, I am old enough to remember the first time I heard uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Mm-hmm. My buddy's car, we just got off of work. He said, have you heard this yet? And he played that wow, fucking guitar really, riff. I, yeah, it's one of those, yeah. like you've got a few like that in your yeah. life that you're like, what the fuck is this, right? So then the Foo Fighters come along and they're just kind of like have been part of your life. So when he goes back and explains, guys, like, like we weren't, like most people go through seven guitarists before they put on a record. Yeah. Like we did that. And then like just through the years, you're like, and that song, and that song, and that song. Mm-hmm. And you just like to appreciate them because most bands last one or two records. And the amount of amazing songs that we would have even never heard yeah. had Kurt Cobain lived, right? That, amazing. Yeah. And that was one of the coolest so parts. Of him saying that, you know, we're going through our growing pains when we're already famous. Right. All right. So, so let's back up a little bit. So, but this is the kind of stuff that I, that I like to talk to guys like you about on and off. And I liked you right away when I met you two years ago. Yeah. We just didn't, we talked once when you started the podcast, you, you asked me about to like your picture and to share it and I did whatever. Um, but yeah, dude, I literally like have been fucking like sprinting since day one i have two previous businesses like that you know what i mean and like they get me to a certain point but there's clearly a where i'm stopped and i consume all the content and read all the stuff and there's still some gap i gotta close dude what what you're saying there and i'm living that too is why i love reading books it's why i love having conversations why i love watching documentaries because you learn foo fighters dave Grohl. oh they're going through the same stuff i'm going through and this is what they did, and they kept going. And then you listen, and you hear, and you read more and more and more, and you realize that really if you just keep going, you'll get to the top, or you'll die. See, I think I don't believe that all the time. I do. One way or another, if, if, I, one way or another, if you don't stop, you'll get whatever the top Somewhere is. along the line, I think I stopped believing that, though. I think. I think, that's, I think I'm realizing that in this moment, right? So I believe that. So my previous life, I did stand-up. And that's all I was going like to be. I even more. Right? That was it, man. Like, I, I got on stage. The heavens opened. I'm like, this is it, man. And for 10 years, that's all I did. And I was like, well, of course I'm going to eventually get a sitcom. And then through a longer story I won't tell now, I ended up starting another business. And then I fell back into this, which turns out, like, like this is really where it's at for me. Yeah. People ask me all the time, why don't you go back to stand-up? And it's like, I have zero desire. They're like, yeah, but you're funny and you're good. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, like, I would hate doing that now. Like, this is all my creative juices. I love this. And I started making videos lately, which I never thought I would do because I don't understand video. And yeah. somebody said, Why don't, like, what would you say to somebody who wants to start podcasting? And I'm like, just start. Put them out. Your first ones will suck. You'll get better at it. I'm like, okay, why don't you do that for video? Yeah, there you go. And I was like, and so I have. And, you know, some of them are, anyway, dude, uh, I'm, there's a gap somewhere. Because I think that's good, too, but I think there could be a flaw. There could be a little bit of a flaw there with, like, Gary V says, and people are like, no, man, just keep going. It's like, no, maybe you should give up. Well, no, no, no. I mean, maybe you should pivot, right? But your energy as a person, your drive and go as a person, if you keep that alive, going to hit. You're either going to die. What's the difference? You ready for this? Ready for this? Let me drop something heavy on you? Yeah. What's the difference between me, you, and that guy, and Joe? Maybe it's going to one more. Maybe, maybe if you decide to stop. Maybe if you'd gone that next Spartan event, you'd have been the whatever of the whatever, whatever, whatever. There's nothing different about anyone. Some of the most famous people are not very good at what they do, but they, they just kept going. They just kept going. They, they did a thing that made a thing happen, and then a bunch of things happened, and then they are who they are. There's no different. <clears throat> I'm, you, this, is better than a lot of the stuff I listen to that has millions of downloads. Okay, so can you help me? You want to be my spiritual coach? If I, I mean, could, I'd be helping myself, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the same game. I know, dude, but it's like, you know, you can see, like, I have a friend. It's awesome. Like, he's super successful in business, right? 
and we'd have some conversations and he totally like I had a client that I was pissed at and he'd talk to me I'm like perfect and I call the client back it's great the same day he tells me some problem about his girlfriend and I go A B C D and he goes you're fucking right and it's like it's so much easier yeah. right so much easier but yeah we should like I just you know, feel like it's time and work and luck and that's how it happens I that, 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 that's as much trust me when do you what happens when you wake up and go fuck I mean, I, I stopped fighting. You find something, you find another hill to climb. Right. This, But I'm all in on this, man, at this yeah, point. so am I, dude. <laughs> but you were all in on comp, stand-up comedy. Right. And then now you're not. So you're up, whatever. And then if this doesn't work, you'll find another thing. And then you'll either make it or you'll die. Period. I love how you say that. And I, it'd be easier if there wasn't these other four mouths to feed. That, again. Oh, so Johnny actually just said to me last night, because I talked to him about this stuff. And it's just forming relationships. It's being a good person. It's doing good work. And it's just keeping going. But he said to me, because we were talking about that same thing, and he said, well, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't quit, but you might have to do this other thing to supplement while this you know, builds and builds and builds. Well, and I always say that. And I always say, hey, man, if my family was starving, I would go work at Starbucks. But thankfully, I haven't had to do that because whatever I'm doing here is working enough because yeah. the, you know... My wife recently went back to work, and we're thrilled, right, because that money is awesome. But when you look at the amount of hours she has to put in, and then when I do close a deal and that check comes, and it's like, whew. We're in a very similar boat, man. It's the same thing. But you've got at least consistent coaching, right? That's at no, least. No, I have consistent nothing. I have consistent content. <laughs> okay, that's, that's A number one, though. But it, and it's, is it good, right? It's freaking great. Okay, there you go. But it's a lot not of, monetized. A lot of consistent content that's good. Garbage. Wait a minute. Okay. Do you want A, advertisers, B, Patreon, C, both? Uh, do you want? Or D, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Pa I'd rather a Patreon. Okay. So why don't you start that? Because I, I don't think I have the numbers to really make it worth it. Can, can I tell you, I've had a life-altering situation happen. I had Patreon sitting there doing nothing for three years. Um, somebody said, why don't you turn it on a little more? So I started talking about it a little more, but I still had no, I did none of the things. I did none of the levels. I did none of the intro it's, video. Okay. Did, none of the things it, you're supposed to fucking do. Very similar, man. And I'm anxious to see this. Somebody who is listening to this show said, Matt, what are you, why are you not doing that? And I had all the excuses. And he goes, would you send me like your numbers, how much you are getting, what your listeners are? And then he said, let me come up with a plan for you because this is what I do for my company. And he did it. And I, it's, it's kind of like if he had called me a year ago, I probably wouldn't have fucking done it. But we spent maybe a total of, like, let's say it was two hours on the phone designing the thing. The minute I did what he said, doo -doo -doo -doo, this guy changed from $5 to 10 This guy changed from $10 to 12 Why did he go from $10 to 12 Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This guy went from $1 to 5 so Like You did start offering the tiers or whatever? Yes. Because guess what? Those things work. Yeah. And it's all about, it's, it's. It's psychology of 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 people want to help you. People want to climb the ladder. I've, so I'm telling you that that I feel like an idiot for not doing it sooner, and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. And by the way, we're not talking. I'm like I'm up to like ninety nine dollars. But guess what? Guess what ninety nine dollars is? Yeah. That's Libsyn for the month. That's yeah. Mailchimp for the month. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a million. Percent. And that's what every you dude. So anyway, let's talk about that for starters when and, we and, get offline. But before that, I think. The reason that people would want to help you and the reason that people want to help me is because we put it out there. Right. Like, and I have this weird, like, oh, I, should I ask them? Like, I no, but we put it out there like you put you out there. What you just said in those two minutes, most people wouldn't say on air. Which or, is or, what they wouldn't say. I don't know. They just they, That they need money? Yeah, yeah. Or, or, they, <laughs> or they wouldn't uh, say $99 because they would think people would think that's not a lot and then they think I'm not good and then they wouldn't. You know, this is whatever. But I figured, whatever, F it. This is just, it's, it's really hard. And this is what it looks like. And so I put it out there on my show. I talk about that. You obviously talk about it too. And I think that's why people are compelled. The, the two things that I've gotten lately, the thing I got from this girl, this girl who's like one of these fucking amazing fucking Instagram, everybody loves her thing, is she's like, okay, so like, I don't know if it's Gary V that said this or somebody, but if you have a small number of people that love what you do, mm -hmm. you can get that to a lot of people. If you have a lot of people that kind of like what you do, right? So she goes, you treat those people, man, like gold. 
So every you respond to every comment. You you know the stuff that Gary Vee says mm-hmm. that I kind of thought I did. She responds by video, right? So instead of just blah blah, it's like hey, and I started doing that, and yeah. I'm telling you, it's great. Now sometimes I'll be honest, it does feel like work if a bunch of coming on the same day, and I gotta like make a personal message. But I'm telling you, so that plus this little Patreon piece, and by the way, this is like one thing because even though me and this guy did all this work in a week and got it working, and we were, and I basically I sent him a screenshot every time there was a, yeah. a new one. And thank you, by the way, Patreon members, thank you. Um, he said, see, people want, people want you to be successful. Because like, I, and he said, he said when people reach out to you just to say thank you, he goes, you know you can say to them, by the way, there's a way you can support me if you want. I'm like, are you sure? Isn't that me asking? Yeah. For, he's like, no, it's, they want to. You're, just, you're not making them. You're just saying, hey, by the way, if you haven't checked it out, go to Patreon. I got a new way to, if you want to support me, great. And I said, do you realize that's, okay, so let's say we've now maximized Patreon or started maximizing Patreon, okay? Now there's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, right? It's just like one thing. You could have, yeah, I could. Are you a one-man show, basically? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got people that, like, help me out here on a, like, cover. I'm pointing to Spartan. They work for free races. I can get them free races and free swag. I can't pay for anything. But, yeah, all that stuff. It's like you could pay a professional not just for social but for literally for each channel. Yeah. Because there's, like, have you, have you ever looked at your analytics and messed around with them? A little bit. But right. But they, because you think, like, Jesus Christ. Because once you, you start going on that hole, you're like, oh, my God. I could spend a week just figuring it out, this stuff. So and you got to like pri- or pri- again another Spartan Way principle. You got to prioritize. What are, you, are you here to pimp Joe's book? Are you? No, but I do. I do love it. I did read it. And I really? It. Yeah. I don't know. I've kind of heard. I, I feel like I've heard the cookie story a few times. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Really? Yeah, I did. I did. It's uh, a reminder. It's very easy to re- you know whatever. No, I'm not going to promote the book here, but or maybe I am actually. It just it was good. It spoke to me. It's very easy, very simple stuff that it's just good reminders. Who are you listening to now? Who are you always listening to? Prior to that, I want to ask you, the stand-up comedy, have you ever read Steve Martin's book, Born Standing Up? No. Incredible. I will read it. Kevin Hart's book? No. Incredible. Okay. Read I will. Both. Okay. Who do I listen to? You mean like a Gary Vee type who do I listen to? Or no, podcast anything. Or anything. For fun, for Rogan. pleasure. Everybody loves Rogan. I can't take Rogan for three hours, man. I don't. I'm, I you pick, know what? I very rarely listen to the whole three hours. But I, I'll, I have to really like the guest. Yeah. To, to like. No, not me. I, I, I mean, obviously that helps, but I just, I enjoy him as a human, and I'm modeling. I think myself after him. Right? Isn't that we all kind of just want to be the guy that just talks about the stuff that he likes? But you know who else I've been getting into a lot lately? Bill Simmons. Yeah. Do you know who he is? Yeah, but I don't listen to him or. So Bill Simmons was like the first one of the first guys to start killing it on blog because he he's like the us 20 years ago that would you know make well then i don't know bill simmons no no so bill simmons well what people know him for now is that he's one of the guys behind 30 for 30 okay. 30 years ago he wrote for the boston globe and wrote hilarious columns right people were like oh my god like before before social people would forward his mm-hmm. columns to people so then he starts a website so then he grows up and then he starts working for ESPN. He st- they let him start his own thing called Grantland. Now he's got like 20 podcasts. Now he's one of those guys. So he's got, you're fine guys, you're fine. So he's got a podcast. He could probably even interview you if you he's want to got, interview. He's got, he's, got, he's got a show that he does three times a week that's just like whatever, just like kind of like Bill Burr does, right? One of those like three shows a week kind of guys. Then he's got, he's got a show called The Rewatchables. Him and a buddy talk about movies that came out 20 years ago, right? Dream job, yeah. Because it's just like about the thing, yeah. Right again, they're not doing anything different than we are. Okay, but the, he obviously they have a level of credibility, or but how did they get that? That's what I'm saying. But because they, they did what you and I are and doing they right now. Their fucking instincts. Yeah, and they're doing what you and I are okay. doing right now. But babies got to eat, man. They do, and you don't think their babies had to eat? <laughs> you don't think their wives went back to work? You don't think their wife? I may have to call them, you every day for a, a gut yeah. check, dude, because I'm telling you. Don't you don't think their wife says, Charlie, you're going out to Lake Tahoe for four days. Are you making any money? Nope. Not. Might you? Maybe. Right. I doubt it. Right. But I'm going to get really awesome content, <laughs> and that's what it was about. No, that dude. That thing's, we're speaking the same language. Yeah. And that's what they, they being successful people, do. You can write fancy copy. You, look, you can buy the program, write the fancy copy if you want to do that. Right. I don't think you want to do that. Neither do I. Right. So that we're we're making a choice, an intentional choice, to not do that. Rather, create awesome, real content. Right. And I'm gonna get up way earlier than I want to tomorrow because she asked me to be in that thing. 
maybe they. And I wanted to invite myself there, but I didn't. And okay. I regret not. Okay. <laughs> I can say Charlie wants to come. I don't know. I feel like I put in my time with Marion, though. We're talking like six years of knowing I'm this I'm like three years. Okay. I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> so will she even remember to like make sure to tag ORM when it goes up? Who knows? Who knows what will eat? But yeah. I'm going to do it because, yeah. right? I, I tell you what, and this is a. a, a, a a message to Anil's the listeners. getting more than me, and he doesn't speak English. How does that play? <laughs> he does speak English. <laughs> but this is a, a message. Two, I'm getting one. A message to listeners. I just texted my buddy. He asked about this, and I said it's really cool because I feel like I'm becoming part of the Spartan family, and it's three years, three years in the making, right? Right. And that's it. Just takes time, and just doing stuff because you like. <laughs> Was that you? Or was that what's her name that was here earlier? It's like uh, an Adam Sandler skit <laughs> where he blames the guy for farting. He's like, it wasn't me. And the guy who farted keeps saying, no, yes, it was. I always blame whoever's near me. It happens to be you in this case. We have closed down the VIP, bro. It is 6.15. Like, nobody's in VIP. There's no VIP dinner, which is kind of a bummer. Really? Because I like the dude. You know how these trips go, right? It's expensive, so you get a free meal. I, trust me. I've been looking for free food since I got here. And I'll tell you that. Keeping it real. Okay, so you in pack my and fanny snacks. pack, packing snacks. I have three like bars, whatever, Cliff bars left. You know how much I paid for each one of them? Three seventy-five. You know how much a turkey sandwich and four bars and a Barks root beer cost me? Thirty-one dollars. Where? At my hotel over there. Why did you buy from the hotel? Because I, it was late last night. I wanted some fuel for today. I didn't want to leave the hotel, and I was. Bad planning. Do you know how much I ruminated over spending thirty one dollars? I'm the same way. It. I'm still ruminating. Dude, we're ke- listen. We're keeping it real. I'm at the wing place today, right? There's hot wings here. Fire the, fi- the pizza place. Oh, okay. Wow. And I knew there was free food here. I knew there was VIP was. was there? Yes, today there was free food at eleven. You've missed it, listeners. Sorry. Was running. Right. I was not, and I'm like, I'm here to sit with my friends. For a little bit, but then I'm going to come eat the free lunch because, you know, you, that's the thing my wife and I have learned the hard way is I always go, well, I'm going to spend like 50 bucks. It's like, nope. Before you even get out of the airport, you've spent 20 on two coffees, right? Or a coffee and a sandwich, whatever. I packed apples and almonds. Always a good pro, apples, pro tip. Bags pro, pro tip. Almonds are great. But anyway, so we're there. And then I'm like, the lady starts pushing the wings on me. And six wings are eight bucks. And, oh. and 12 wings are 12 bucks or oh. whatever. And I'm like... Should I get them? And then you say, well, what's $12, right? And then you just, you know, you do that 10 times. That's 120 bucks, yeah. and that's where the money goes. Anyway. If there's not free food tonight, I'm ordering a Little Caesars. I can't do that. It's, it's That's too yeah, yuck. Yeah, but I just ran 13 and a half Oh, miles. see, you can. I haven't run 13 and a half miles. I was told that it's just a drinks thing tonight. I'll, you know what? Let's go in. I'll split a pizza with you. Now, do you want to see the underbelly of OCR? I actually want to sit in my underwear and watch Netflix. Okay, live. well, then forget it. <laughs> now, if you want to see the ugly underbelly of OCR, uh, Hunter McIntyre is putting on one of his famous parties tonight, which is probably already raging. I'm going to go just watch the carnage for like an hour because I don't drink. Where? Like at his room? Or oh, yeah. So I'm going to go visit that, but only for like an hour because I don't drink and I don't want to, you know what I mean? I want to stay married, so I don't stay around gotcha. that craziness. Gotcha. But if you want to come over there with me and then we can order a pizza maybe, I don't right. know. Well, dude, this is a great chat. This is a tremendous chat. Can I call you for seriously and you can remind me like, fucking Davis, just fucking keep going. Yeah, Like, you know, we talked earlier about manning up. This is the time when it would be okay to say, fucking dude, you're going to be fine. Just fucking hang in there. Yeah, you will. And I mean, people say it to me and actually dread. So my partner just told me to man up the other day because I was real strict with getting up in the morning and I had this routine where I was getting up at 4.30 for like eight months, but then I was just tired as a human being. I couldn't play with my kids, et cetera. And then I was like, blah, blah, I've been hitting snooze, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, Joe, I think you just need to man up, you know? Well, you're, you're telling people not to hit snooze and you're hitting snooze. You need to man up. Figure out a time and man up. And I was like, I'm going to man up. So I'm telling you, Matt, man up, dude. All right, dude. It'll work out. It'll, shit will buff out, man. Buff out? Is shit, that a Pittsburgh thing? Shit will buff out. You want to say it'll buff out? Is that, is that, are, are you a Stillers fan? I am a Stillers fan. There is a tremendously funny... Oh, what's it called? Steeler Dad, I think it's called. Do you ever watch it? Mm-mm. You'll <laughs> you'll appreciate it. It's on uh, whatever. Did you Google Steeler Dad? Right. It makes fun of the Western PA accent. Right. Um, how you feeling about your team this year? To be honest, I'm kind of a Fairweather fan. I mean, I like that's kind gonna, of no, no. If no, you're no, hold Green on. Bay or Pittsburgh, you're not allowed to be Fairweather. Rip, rip, rip. I'm gonna. Can you edit this out? Yes. Okay, I'm not a Fairweather fan. We'll not edit this out. I'm just not a. Uh, 
I don't follow it too much. You know, the older dude, I get, the less I watch football. Yeah, I, I don't watch it either. I've gone from like every week to every game to like, okay, maybe I'll just watch Thursday. No- I like, I barely even watch. I don't either. And, you know, but obviously they're playing. At one I watch Mike and Tony every day, though. I love those guys. Yeah. Do you watch PTI? No. Part of the interruption? No. I've talked about them on the show before. They're no. great. Um, they have a really good intro for you who lives in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. What if I told you I interviewed DDP on my show? Then I would say you don't need to meet him. But any, any. I have another really good one. Who's that? Mo Masakoy, played in the NFL. He was in an ATV accident, lost his hand. Let's interview me. I'll take that. I will connect you. DDP is amazing. DDP is one of the best. So I have, an, did I tell you I have another podcast? That's yeah. how nuts I am. The Atlanta one? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually didn't know which one I was on right now. I thought <laughs> this is autumn on an Atlanta podcast because I'm not even. Sometimes, I guess sometimes I do both. Sometimes I'm like, screw it. This is good enough for both. Yeah. Um, Diamond Dallas Page, I reach out to his people. I say, can I come and take a class and interview him? And DDP is amazing. And because of my kids, I'm, I'm in, into wrestling again. And he was, when you get a guy like that, when you, when you get somebody that, A, is willing to say anything, and B, has some kind of famous stories, they're the best guess. He's amazing. He is amazing. And my story with my, my buddy interviewed him, and then a guy I work with lost 100 pounds. I was talking to you about him earlier, who DDP's his hero. So I just, like, cold emailed him, and he responded and sent him a personal message, and, and then we became friends and went to hang out with him, et cetera. And I also met Mark Marrow. Who is another WWE wrestler? I don't know that guy. Who you do you say you love him? I don't know him. Oh yeah, no, he he was uh, Johnny B. Bad was his name. Oh okay. But uh, anyway, I'm really good friends with him, so it's a it's a neat. But here's the thing that that when you talk about people still wanting to get to the next level, when I interviewed DDP, I will send you the link. He talked about he talked about um, what's his name? Wrestlers. Jim. No. Uh, Anthony Robbins. Yeah. He was like, I couldn't read. And Anthony Robbins, I listened to Anthony Robbins, and I said, I'm going to do one book. Now, it's hard to do DDP without falling into the Hulkster. You're doing pretty good. They're very close, right, to fall into, like, the Hulkster. He said, I I read Leah Kaioka's book, and it took me a year, and I did it. And I said, have you ever met Anthony Robbins? He goes, I'm going to work with him. And it was like, and I knew what he meant, right? Just like you and I talking about a goal. He's like, I just, I know it, man. I know I'm going to keep, like, and it was like, oh, yeah, he still got goals, yeah. too. That's, I totally got it. And that was, like, super inspiring. And then his story, I mean, is, listen to your conversation with him or listen to my conversation with him because. I will listen to yours because I've already like listened he, to mine. He, he, he just, just, just step back after step back after step back, and then he just keeps going and going and going and going, and boom, and then it happens. And he starts helping a ton of guys. Yeah, which is. I think the cooler. Did you see? Did you see the resurrection, of Jake the Snake? Can you choose me to Jake? No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know him. All right, well, listen, dude. I feel like we've become like totally like real friends We're here. Friends? No. I almost said bros. It's all right. All I right. do have your number, right? We'll text each other after this. But let's do a quick selfie. Okay. Well, we'll need to get each other's numbers before we text each other. All right. We don't already have it. All right. Good chat, dude. Good chat, Matt. That was it. The Spaniard. Charlie Brenneman. Um, thanks for sitting down with me. You said it was one of the best ever, Charlie. I want to know if you still mean that in reflection. Like I always tell people about a race when they get done with, you know, an Ultra Beast or World's Toughest or any Ultra. And they're like, oh, my God, hardest thing ever. I'm like, well, just let it sit. Just let it sit a week, two weeks. See how it feels. See how it compares. How your body feels afterwards. How your mind feels about it. Um, you know just like meeting a new relationship right same thing oh my god she's gonna be the best girlfriend ever just let it just let's let's give it some time so charlie was that we know it's top five was it perhaps best interview ever i won't be hurt if it's not anyhow thanks for joining patreon.com slash obstacle racing media is your way to support the program and the videos that we do we do a lot of great stuff here we've got a lot of great contributors so much good stuff is coming This weekend is weekend off, thank God. We've had a very busy fall. And then, world's toughest mutter. The world comes to Atlanta. Do I even need to mention how much fucking content there's going to be out of this? Watch our Instagram stories. Watch our Instagram. Watch for video. I'm going to get a gazillion interviews. It's going to be awesome. Thanks so much for tuning in. Drop me a note on Instagram. Let me know where you're listening this week. You want to run? You working out? You need a long drive? your long drive wait till you pull over let me know love you miss you mean it gotta run